Now we're rolling. I've just been fucking trying to plug him. Shout out to what? Thanks for the us, sponsor. For our Limitless, sponsor. Limitless Laboratories. At work. Pineapple mango. New flavor. I actually haven't tried this one. Are we going to kick this off with the... We'll maybe we'll we'll pick it off. Oh, I didn't have any water. Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, this one's hectic. Are you just going straight for it? What are you talking about? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Mm. Ah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's hectic. Oh. All right. Good jelly. In about ten minutes' time, if I start freaking out, <clears throat> you know what? This is actually a really good one. This is, you know, the ones like sometimes you have a pre, and it. Uh, this is not a plug, by the way. But you know how sometimes a little, you little have bit a, of plug. a little bit, <laughs> but it's got that thing in it that makes you like. A little bit tingly, but not like in a bad way. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not one of those ones where I'm not a big pre-workout guy, but these. Yeah, I actually I like do it. Do not mind. At not all. a plug. You're welcome, Chris. I'll be waiting for my paycheck. Yeah, I'm whenever you're ready. One, two. Let's just chuck it. Wait. Yeah, let's just. Yeah, let's just, <laughs> just take it there. He's gonna have to pay us now. Yeah, hundred percent. The free sponsorship. You usually charge some decent money for this, Chris. Oh, you've just gone straight for the water too. You've just absolutely blown it. Whole water's gone. Yep, I'm just gonna have to. Get the pasties if we get them. I want to talk about Michael, how this, how this all started. So obviously we've known each other for a while. About what four or five years into our friendship, you just suggested this idea sure. probably a couple months ago. Oh, well, not even maybe I was three in, months. I was, I was in the Maldives, remember? Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I randomly, I, I was kind of just some time to myself over there, and I wanted to do this for a long time, but I've never really felt um, one not comfortable and confident enough to be speaking on camera. And I don't, didn't feel like I had the sort of credibility to, I guess, talk. I guess I don't want to be giving advice to people without some sort of, um, what's the word? Like, like credibility. Uh, credibility, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've, I've showed you on my notes. So I've wanted to do this since, since 2020. And I kind yeah. of got to a point um, when I was over there, I just had a bit of a realization. It's was like, all right, I'm, I'm ready in my life now where I feel comfortable to be able to do this i don't really care what people think yeah I was, you've done one before i've i'm terrible with the tech side of things this is yeah all, yeah oh yeah um, oh um, yeah the workload behind this is not even <laughs> <It's definitely laughs> not. um but yeah i kind of just said hey fuck we're doing a podcast like yeah. oh yeah are we <laughs> yeah see i already had all the setup yeah I, I was much the same like when you first hit me up i was a little bit like not that i didn't feel like i guess you know credible enough but i think I was like, I by no means have made it, but I, I, but I definitely know sort of, I don't want to say that I'm different, but I definitely know that I am on my way somewhere and I'm already, I've, I've started like laying solid foundations for, you know, the pillars of, um, like, you know, health and wealth and relationships and all that sort of stuff. I'm really focusing on growth, you know, financial literacy, all that sort of stuff. So I don't necessarily feel like I'm in a position to give advice but i definitely recognize that you know i'm confident enough to sort of talk about you all that sort you of stuff you definitely have lots of value to share regardless yeah, of like the position that you're in right now yeah, you definitely paved starting to pave the footsteps yeah. to where you want to be and in the future. realistically like i am a fair few steps ahead of like you know i've a lot of got them. some shit yeah, behind yeah. me now i'm making 100 good money i've got investment properties i've got you know all that sort of stuff. So yeah. it's like as much a as a lot of people are striving for that sort of stuff that you, stuff that you've already achieved. Yeah, hundred percent. As much as, as much like to me, it's like feels like nothing. I I think to a lot of people that's yeah. You still feel like really you, you still feel like you've got a long way to go. Yeah, and I feel like that's part of it though. Like you always that you're always going to be never, never whether satisfied. it's satisfied. Yeah, whether it's like when I was a like athlete, whether it's you know in business, whether it's in work, I always feel like. You always have that thing where it's like, oh, it's not good enough. I've got to get better. I've got to get better. I've got to get better. I think that's sort of part of, that's sort of something I've tried to em- embrace a bit too. Like, yeah, it's definitely. not, a, yeah, it's like, you just, you're not that you're never going to feel good enough, but it's you, like, I always am going to strive for more. I'm always going to, you know, I might finish a huge project. You know, I filmed, you know, a few months ago for Ferrari, which was sick. Um, went down on this massive trip, five day trip, charged through the roof. Um, got some really good content, but even still, like at the end of each day, I'd be looking back at the, the content of these amazing cars. But oh, if only, you know, this was slightly better or that was slightly better. Or, you know, if I had done this or I had been here, you know, you know, we've got, yeah, like I said, like that's sort of, you know, it doesn't get much 
like bigger than shooting for yeah, Ferrari. 100%. So, you know, that's just a simple example where like I, I've tried to embrace and sort of, yeah, that, that's going to be part of it. You're, I'm always going to sort of feel that little bit of like, oh, how can I be better? Not that I'm not good enough, but, you know, just striving for that. Okay, how can I, I th- be better? I, th- I think one thing, when I, when I decided that I wanted to do a podcast, this was back in 2020, I made a list on my phone. I had a, like a few guests like named that I would, I would try to get on the podcast back mm. then. And I think what started it was, I think it was 2020. Or it would have been around that time. I bought my first apartment mm. and I was still an electrician apprentice and um, I ran about, like, there was no plan to sort of build off of it. I just, I'd been homeless for a, sh- a short period and I had always been my fear that I always needed like a, a safe place. So I just yeah, like, yeah. my goal was I need to save to have a fucking house over my head. So I'm not in that, that situation ever, ever again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I didn't care if it was the shittiest one bedroom apartment. I just needed to get something. So mm. that was my goal through it, my apprenticeship. And I saved up every cent until I achieved that. Mm. I bought this one bedroom apartment in Southport, bought it for 180,000. And I, it was, it was fucked. Like it was disgusting. Yeah. But like, I knew that through my trade, I'd be able to do something to make it look better. Yeah. Yeah. So, At least you had somewhere to live. And, I, and that was the thing. I had a roof over my head that I knew that I could always fall back on if shit hit the fan. Yeah. 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 So, um, I renovated that house and then I got it revalued once I finished and I only spent $5,000 on it. I did it all myself. I did floors, painted. For five like grand. Five grand. Floors, paint and it's only one bedroom apartment. Yeah, so it's yeah, only true. Small. So it's not like, yeah, yeah. Still. So yeah, I renovated it um, and I got it revalued mm. and that, they said that it was worth an extra 50 grand that I, what I bought it for and I was true. like, whoa. Like, Say less. That's like that light bulb moment in my head. I was like, fuck, there's so much more I can do yeah, with this. Yeah, so yeah. then I was like, I actually made a few videos back then like saying like, hey, to my friends, I, I posted it yeah. on Facebook I too. think I saw on Instagram um, on like one of the original ones. Back, was it on MM pr- Property? Ma- maybe. And I pretty much was like, hey, like I've done this. I'm an apprentice. I'm only making like seven hundred dollars a week and, yeah. I've, and, I've, and i've just made myself like 50 grand in equity in, yeah. in in a month like if i can do it anyone can do yeah, it yeah, and yeah. then i pretty much from that equity i've got another apartment and then within within 10 months and i'm still only earning seven hundred dollars a week within 10 That's months handy. i had three apartments and i was like true so then i was like fuck i, I should be able to teach people how to do this because it's yeah. not hard like i've fucking come from nothing i've been homeless and now i've got three apartments within 10 months and i like I had them all rented out and I'd use the equity to buy the next one. Yeah, and I, yeah. owned, I saved, it took me until I bought the first one. I, I saved ever since I left school. So right, right, right. over, I don't know, three or four years, I managed to save 23,000. Yeah. Um, and that was my initial deposit. I didn't have to outlay any more money after that. Yeah, like yeah. I just used the equity. That's and sick. I was I was so mind blown that I was able to do that. Yeah, how's this even possible? Yeah, yeah, and I was because that was never the plan. Yeah, um, I'm saying you don't learn that stuff in school. Like I remember, like no. school was good. Uh, I guess school was good for me in terms like I did like the I guess higher sort of harder subject. I did like yeah. math, like you know the harder maths, physics, chemistry, aerospace, like all that sort of stuff, and PE, which was actually pretty tough, but. Yeah, like even within doing that, like you sort of learn the foundations of sort of like how to solve problems and things like that, but you don't learn things like that, like the real life stuff, no. like no, you don't learn about, I actually think it's for a reason, but they don't teach you about, you know, taxes and like, you know, mortgages, like that's yeah, like, or like even like loopholes or like, like how to set up business and equity all that sort of stuff. Yeah, equity and like, there should be like a, a like a property and on like a subject to learn about property because that's like a, yeah, a massive part of your life. Yeah, even that. Whether it be even, like renting, buying, mortgages, that should all yeah. be under the same roof. People need to learn that. Taxes. Yeah. I literally think they do it for a reason though, to, to obviously, because yeah, I think school is like a, without getting too sort of, um, what's the word? Like a tin <laughs> foil hat, yeah. like whatever those people are, <laughs> too skeptical or whatever. I think that it's sort of a system to sort of build workers because you got the. I we, guess, well, we need them. We yeah, need yeah, them. and that's how the sort of the world runs. So, like, you, you put, you have to go to school. You go through school. It's recommended, sort, of, and they set you up to go to uni. And then uni degree gets you sort of a decent job. If you don't go to uni, you usually get a trade and you continue being a worker. And it's only sort of the few that sort of recognise, hey, this is 
yeah not it that sort of go to that next level otherwise people sort of just get comfortable i literally yeah without getting too fucking crazy with it i think that's sort of there's a reason for that yeah, there's I'd, like a system in place to keep people there otherwise because if you just taught everyone how to you know say for example do what you do everyone would be doing it there'd be no one to sort of you know yeah drive trucks or there'd be no one to do that sort of stuff so yeah i think def- it's actually for a reason i definitely agree and then also like on that topic too with the schooling side of things like oh as, I, as you were saying before it's like you you were academically pretty intelligent and you went to uni yeah just like pass just just passed. just passed. but like but for example like i wasn't yeah. at all um i i wasn't all i focused on at school was sport like mm. i was footy was my number one goal that's all i ever thought about mm. i went to school the only reason i stayed in school was because i was able to play play footy yeah, at yeah, school yeah. and um i guess with, with with in doing that though you learn dedication you learn consistency all those pillars that transition now into business i yeah. learned back at school through sport not through the education system yeah yeah 100 percent. I, I was similar i sort of um I, through sort of the back end of high school i was got it really into sprinting so i was sort of like training between your sort boy, of your boy quick 10 to 15 <laughs> sessions like elite level training was that it's sort of a sport where like like i was f- relatively like pretty high level like we won yeah. a few like australian sort of team medals that sort of stuff but it's not really a sport where you're rewarded for like there's no real for, for teams and things like that you you they sometimes every what is it four years or two years or something they do worlds they'll select sort of one or two people from the whole country to go over there and then but even still like it sort of leads you nowhere because all the best people are here in sort of what i was doing yeah um so yeah so it's sort of a bit of a nowhere sport but like didn't get really super far in that even though i was fairly elite but i was training to an elite level like doing you know three to four gym sessions a week doing three to four track sessions treadmill sessions doing mobility yoga every day like having to you know it, just, it was full-time sort of athlete life while i was sort of in the back end of high school which um i guess both kept me out of trouble for i guess that whole period sort of year 10 11 12 afterwards sort of into uni instead of sort of going out and you know going to the pub and all that things like that it sort of kept me out of that and it allowed me to sort of focus on this and i had older friends within that as well that sort of kept me out of trouble as well which was really really good um and sort of matured me up because i was hanging i was like you know 17 18 19 hanging out with people that were like 23 24 25 and so on so they were sort of a little bit past that and yeah we went out sometimes all that sort of stuff but i sort of missed getting stuck in this rut that a lot of people did yeah and i definitely. was able to sort of yeah i guess attach to their age and maturity and also sort of skip all this bullshit and look at it from the outside be like oh that person's like not doing too good oh that person's not doing i too think good one, either. one of the big things that matured me a lot was my family and i was brought up in adelaide mm. and I, as i said rugby and footy was like my number one goal so mm. i had i had a scholarship to move up here mm. and i left like my whole life behind to come up and chase that dream so mm. like once i moved up here when i was 17 i was living with a coach um to, to, yeah, to pursue that dream that dream and you have to mature pretty quickly i like i wasn't never doing my washing back home like that was yeah, like, yeah, my, yeah. mum and dad's job yeah, or 100%. i wasn't cooking myself meals every day yeah and like yeah I was, I was up here at year 12 and I had to learn that shit pretty quickly. And I think that's one thing that uh, definitely um, excelled my success. Yeah, I'd say. 100%. I went through waves because obviously all that happened. I moved it. Mum moved. My mum moved to Brisbane. I lived with her till I was, I think I was 18 or 19. She moved to Brisbane. And not like it's a big move, but it was either move from Gold Coast to Brisbane with it's her. It's enough though. It's not, yeah. I was like, oh, I can't. Like, it's not lifestyle. happen. So, I don't have it. All my friends are here. My family's here. So I was like, okay. Uh, sorry. The rest of my family, my friends, my training. I was working here at that point at uni, so I was like, oh, I can't. So I was like, okay, went and moved out of home. Not super young, like 19 is not crazy young, but I was out of home. And then I sort of did all that sort of stuff. Uh, Mum sort of was really, really good. She sort of not, not prepared me for it, but for the most part, I was doing my own thing. Yeah. Like, I guess once I sort of, the back end of high school, I was doing that stuff. And I think like whether it was a choice of like, whether she did it on purpose or not, I'm not sure. But it did prepare me for, I guess... Like moving out nothing really changed too much i guess i cooked a little bit more for myself and sort of learned that but then i sort of on the back end of that um and i guess sort of similar to your story once i'd sort of moved out a few years in i was starting to i guess like make pretty good money i was 
I didn't sort of, I wasn't super efficient. How did you actually, of, what was your first sort of job or like, how did you actually get into, into photography? Photography was, was later. Photography. photography was only sort of a few years ago, I guess, once all this sort of, so I guess long story short, I, during that period, so I moved out and I was like, I want to make more money. And I guess I took that sort of hard work ethic from training and I applied that to my life. Like I was still training relatively full time, but I was sort of half in, half out. And I was just like, how can I make as much money as I can? And, and the only way I sort of knew was to get a job. Yeah. So I got, a, I got a job and I got multiple jobs. So I was working four to five jobs. I was doing, you know, I was working from, you know, I'd DJ in the morning, 5 a.m. Till, till whenever. And then I'd work, um, you know, in hospitality for eight hours. And then I'd finish, I'd go home quickly, have dinner, have a shower, get changed, go work at the nightclubs until sort of, three in the morning then I wake up the next day do it again so I was doing these crazy stupid hours and I was just I filled it with that and I was like okay there's a yeah yeah there's a gap here all right if I if I pick this course at uni I didn't have to go so that means I can work for like you know this this little morning period here what job can I get to do that oh I can work for this person and they pay me cash okay perfect and I sort of just was just grinding and grinding and grinding and sort of not that I regret it but I didn't learn too much I was just sort of it, it definitely like it helps now because now I'm doing sort of 12 to 16 hour days no worries but like that was what I was doing I never really leveraged anything and I've really learned too much but yeah I was just grinding and earning as much as I, I possibly could through that way and I was only earning what like between I guess 25 and 50 an hour by that point straight straight after school but I was earning 25 to 50 an hour you know cash here doing it here doing it till 3 a.m there I was earning this much here and it sort of built up yeah yeah and then I guess the sort of next period of it, um, got a bit sidetracked, but I guess to sort of finish off my story, the be- the next period of it was, I guess, learning to sort of, I was mature and everything for my age, but I let things get a little bit out of hand. I was sort of um, learnt, I guess, you know, paying bills and things like that and how leases worked and all that sort of stuff. And I was, um, went out a little bit through through this stage because I had money, I was, I was partying a little bit and then um, ended up. I had a real estate agent. So we had a 12 month lease there and w- with our house. So it was a five bedroom house. Three of us went in on it, leased it. We were renting the other two rooms out to, to sort of offset our rent. So we were paying, I think 80 or 90 bucks a week rent there because they, they were offsetting. Then one of them moved out. Then we had a third room to split between two of us. Then he ended up moving out and I kept the whole five bedroom house. So I was making two, 300 bucks a week off this, off this house with, like no expenses like everyone was sort of paying their their rent they'd all chip in for bills um you know obviously had a few times where like people would move in you know we had a nurse next to this other person who was like up late and just like there was the struggle of dealing with dynamics and you know, had to kick people out and get people so it was you know it wasn't all easy but i was running this the other forums yeah i was in the master i was earning two three hundred bucks a week had no real over overheads. I was like, this is great. Yeah, this yeah. is fantastic. I got into crypto at that point. Crypto was booming. I made like 20, 30 grand there. I was like, what is going on? Life's, life's good, great. Baby. Life's, <laughs> gi- life's good. Life's, life's good. I have no expenses, no overheads. I'm making money from this thing that, you know, why didn't I move out sooner? This is the best. And then, yeah, I guess going back, sort of got a little bit carried away partying and all that sort of stuff. Let things sort of catch up a little bit. Got a bit stuck in this rut. And then um, we're on a... I was, we're doing six month or I think three month leases because the owners were sort of trying to sell it and um, yeah so doing three month leases and then the sort of you know renewed 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 and then the next one like, oh hey we're actually going to sell it you know they put it on the market I was like sweet no worries yeah you can sell it and then they ended up selling it and then they kicked us out I think like two months not kicked us out but they sort of now knowing now they I shouldn't have moved out but they're like hey property sold you got to get out and they sort of did it sneakily where they sort of like just text like where they, they yeah, kicked yeah. us out like two months early sort of thing um no i think it was sorry i think it was six month leases not three months i don't know where i got that from yeah six month leases so though i think we just signed a new one we we're a month or two in so we still had like four or five months left on this lease you didn't um, know that you to apply yeah I, I didn't know i was young and they was just like sort of power carded hey you've got to move out and i was like oh well you know what happens i ha- hadn't experienced this before and i was like oh okay what happens and then sort of you know knew that date was coming knew that date was coming didn't really know what to do and then all of a sudden woke up one day and i was like holy shit that day is tomorrow and i hadn't really like i looked at places but i didn't really like have it organized and i didn't really know like they didn't give much guidance and they were also trying to like 
you know, not be sly about it. Be sly, yeah. So they'd be like, that. I'd be, I'd text them, and then they'd sort of call back the next morning, and it was they were really sus about it. So they ended up, yeah. So not they kicked us out, but our le- they sort of pushed us out. They played, played you. Yeah, played me <laughs> sort of pretty hard, and then um, yeah. So that that ended the, the next day. I woke up, I was like, holy shit, and so I had to kick, well, not kick everyone out, but like I was like, everyone sort of knew that it, that it was selling. I was like, hey, everyone, because uh, I was the only one getting the emails. Yeah. Hey, everyone, um, the lease <laughs> actually ends tomorrow. And sort of I was so busy and I was doing all this shit and I just didn't really sort of realize it just came up so fast. And then I was like, I remember sitting there on my bed. I was like, holy fuck, I'm going to be out of this. And I remember looking around. I didn't have that much stuff, but I had this master bedroom with like a fair bit of shit. All the appliances were mine, all the couches, all the TVs, all the dining table, the fridge, everything was mine. I was just like... Where the fuck am I going to put I'm this driving stuff in? a. I'm stupidly driving a AMG right now. I can't really fit this stuff in my car. All this stuff in there, yeah. And that was another thing I sort of learned. I spent all this money in a stupid car. I was doing this. I didn't really like. I wasn't sort of financially literate then, so I lot of learned a lot of mistakes through there. But um, yeah, I was like, holy fuck. And then I was like, all right, what can I do? I remember sitting there for like ten minutes. I was like, you're wasting your time. You've got less than twenty four hours to get everything the fuck out of here you got to come back here and you're going to be the only one to clean this place because you've just pissed everyone off and you've done wrong by them. So I was like, fuck, all right, let's go. No time to waste. I remember I was like, all right, I got a Mercedes. I can't fit shit in Mercedes. I need to get a van or something and I need to go, I need to go get it out of here. So I remember dri- I was driving to, I was like, I remember seeing a Bunnings van that they, they do like high cars and high yeah, utes. Yeah. I was like, all right, fuck it. Live around the corner from Bunnings. I'm going to go there. I'm going to get a van. So I drove there on my way. I'm sort of figuring it out. I'm like, fuck, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And then I ended up, um, I ended up hiring a van and I was like, okay, it's all right. So I got the van. Everything's paid for. Cool. Got the van. All right. Driving home, driving home. What the fuck do I do? I can't just leave it in the van. I've only got the van for a day. And I was like, all right, um, storage places. All right. And I Googled all of them. I was like, fuck. And that, they were all full. And then one had this sort of like this medium sized sort of storage. I was like, sweet. I'll take it. I'll be there right now. Drove there in the van, you know, sorted everything, sweet. Drove back home, started just loading it up, just like packing shit in there. I was doing trips to, my brother came and helped me for a couple of hours, just sort of, you know, and then he had to go back to his sort of, his life because yeah, he had, yeah. you know, he's not dealing with my problems. Um, but yeah, he helped me out thankfully. But yeah, got all the biggest stuff in there and then sort of by that night had cleared everything out and then I was laying there at like one in the morning, just exhausted, laying on the floor. I was like, oh, this is so fucked. What have I done, you dickhead? <laughs> And then, um, yeah, just sort of slept there on the floor, um, sort of by myself. And then I was like, all right, tomorrow, you know, I had, I had work that next morning. I had to think six or seven a.m. I was I was working at a, at a school, um, doing coaching there, and sort of finished that sort of eight o'clock. I think we had to be out by like twelve or one was like sort of the cutoff time when they came and inspected it. So if, I remember sitting on, you know, coaching the over. I was just freaking out. I was like, I have so much to do. Like obviously, cleaning a big house takes a while like five bedroom house cleaning by yourself i'm not that good at cleaning so <laughs> didn't have much cleaning shit and then um yeah so finished work there drove to bunnings again went to the cleaning aisle just got everything got mops got bleach got like a million wet wipes i was just scrubbed the whole place and then the yeah, lady came through at one and she was like oh the place looks really clean and because like it wasn't super clean but because they sort of fucked us around i think she was being a little bit nice she's like yeah. oh i just got to get rid of some dirt on the windows you know, I'll come back tomorrow, it'll be fine. I was like, oh, sweet. So I got my, ended up getting my bomb back, hosed down the windows, everything was fine. But then, yeah, I guess I had to solve the problem of having nowhere to live. So I had everything in storage, had this stupid AMG, tiny CLA 45, sick car, but not great, not super comfortable to sleep in. So yeah, that was my house for a couple of weeks. Um, and then, yeah, ended up about a week or so into, the, yeah. Oh yeah, nearly two weeks into that, um, you know, stayed with my brother for a little bit. And then I was like, right, you similar to your situation. I was like, this ain't happening yeah. for me or for sort of my future family. So that was when I sort of switched on. I was like, all right, sell the car, stupid financial decision. That was when I sort of started learning about finances and becoming financial literate and working out budgeting and things like that and sort of working towards goals. Um, this was probably, yeah, only four or so years ago. Um, and yeah, that was when I really sort of separated myself i was like all right enough fucking around yeah, you can't keep working yeah yeah you can't keep doing all these random jobs you can't keep spending money on stupid shit you can't like this is it and then yeah that was sort of when i started to lay the foundations for sort of what i do now and sort of finished uni um got into filming and then 
yeah, the rest is sort of history. It sort of just yeah. compounded from there. It's a crazy yeah. story. Yeah, that just went on a ramble. That was like a 15 minute story. <laughs> Sorry if that was boring. <laughs> Fuck, I just kept talking. Um, I think I, I was obviously, um, I was homeless for a period too. Mm. And, but mine was a little bit different as I kind of chose, it sounds stupid, but I, I was living with a partner at the time and I knew that I was just super comfortable mm. and I wasn't really trying to achieve like more than what I was just so comfortable I was, yeah. I was, I was chilling in the relationship and I was just doing my 9 to 5 but yeah. I knew that I wanted so much more than that and I kept saying to her hey let's buy a house or mm. let's do this I'm trying to like increase our investments and finances and stuff mm. and she just wasn't really interested in it mm. and I knew like if I stayed with her I was just going to chill too yeah yeah I and then you look back later yeah and I and, and I, I, I wanted to strive to do more and I just felt like at the time in my life she wasn't there as well so I ended up she, our relationship was fine and I ended up up choosing to leave because I wanted to mm. try to strive for more and I felt like I was stagnant and stuck um, yeah. when I was there so I ended up I was I had the lease there and I lived with her and her sister I gave them the house and yeah. ended up moving out and um yeah slept in my car for a little bit and then ended up i had a friend's place that i was able to stay on the couch but um ever, ever since then that was that was a massive mm. thing where it's like nah never again yeah 100 yeah, at the same time like i was like nah never again i'm gonna build this for myself but at the same time it's sort of like giving me the confidence in that like it was shit but it wasn't it's doable like if i lost 100%. everything today and i just i you know my house got robbed lost all my cameras lost all my equipment I, my bank accounts got shut down and my I got kicked out of the house or whatever. You know that you I know just, I'll be all right. Like yeah, yeah. I'll be able to, all right. I got a couple of days where this is going to be shit. If I lost all my jobs, everything, all right. Okay, no worries. I can go can build back up. I can borrow a camera or I can use my phone or I can do something and I can make, you know, 500 bucks, 1000 bucks and I can sort of build things up then I can get a place. And to be honest, like sleeping out of my car was what shit. Don't recommend it. But at the same time, I remember thinking like it's just what you got to do. Like one one of the things that I think is cool is so the day that I was officially say homeless, mm. I put it I put it in my calendar and it mm. reminds me every year. So like let's say mm. like it I think it was it was October something or September. I don't know yeah. the date, but it comes off my phone. So like I could be yeah, that's cool. It's been I think it was four years ago now. So every, yeah. like oh n- true yeah yeah so like it's, not, it's not, pretty recent yeah yeah it's not uh, that, not that long ago yeah. at all. Um, so. <laughs> Every, every every time it pops up, no matter, it seems to always catch me when I'm not feeling the the best as well. Mm. So I could be fucking run down or mm. whatever it is, and it pops up, and I'm like, fuck. Four years ago, I was in this position. I think it would be going on five years this year. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I can't wait to pop up again this year. And yeah, see yeah. Where I'm at. And then it's just all of those things that just you appreciate how far you've come so quickly. Yeah, hundred like, percent. I always forget to, I guess, not stop and smell the roses, but I guess like. Oh, you have, have you have to you have to yeah, look back. And I've really been trying to do, even through that whole period where I was working hard, and even to be honest, out of like the last four or so years where I've been going a lot better, the first sort of year or two, I didn't really stop and appreciate much. I was just like grind, grind, grind. Accepted that I wouldn't really see friends. Accepted that I would see family less. Like those things are still important to me, but I wasn't. I guess at the, at, now I'm sort of like. I'm more present and I'm involved in the journey and I realize, all right, when I'm working, I'm working, I need to make time for this. I need to sort of prioritize family, I need to prioritize health. And I'm sort of, when I'm in those things, when I'm at the gym or when I'm, you know, with my family, I'm really focusing and being grateful for that. And then when I'm working, I'm really focusing on, you know, that. Whereas in the first couple of years, it's just, it's just a bit of a blur. A blur. Yeah, I didn't really focus on much. I didn't stop to be grateful for much. You know, I made this money, made that. And I was like, sweet, cool. Is, in my bank, pay tax, let's go. Keep moving on. I, I, it is really hard for people to appreciate and maybe look at the bigger picture, what it's going to be like in future. Because I remember, like, I ended up... So it was about a year after I left this partner. Mm. I was living... Um, I like renting a room and i then about a year later i ended up buying that one bedroom apartment mm. and um i was with an, i was dating a new uh girl at the time and she was making lots of money she was mm. she was really successful um and i wasn't i was just an, an apprentice and I, mm. but i i knew that i had I'd, i was striving for so much more mm. um and i was living literally week to week to cover these apartments as i was kind of moving from one to the next and yeah. i had i had three at one point and i remember saying to her like hey like i know 
right now, like I've got no money and we can't, I can't afford anything yeah. for us. To, like I literally just stay at home because I can't afford anything. Yeah. And I knew that she had money. So it was like, I just felt like I wasn't good enough to be with her. And she, yeah. and like, and she couldn't see that, that bigger picture. Yeah. And yeah. then like, I kind of sacrificed for a long period because I was able to, to see that bigger vision, but some yeah. people, some people really struggle with it. And I remember yeah. like, I, I ended up leaving her and I sold those three or well, just, just COVID hit. And I was like, fuck. fuck, I don't know. I've got, I'm like, I'm, if I lose my job, I'm fucked. Cause I can't afford to pay these houses. Cause yeah. I'm living week to week kind of thing. Yeah. Um, COVID hit and I was like, fuck, all right, I'm going to have to sell one because then I've got a bit of a safety net yeah. if something fucks up. So I sold one and then by bang, I think it was like 60 grand hit my account and I'd never seen that money mm. in my life. I was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, like, it just, it was just like, it was, it was life changing feeling yeah, kind of 100%. thing. And then I ended up, I ended up selling kind of all three of them off. And I think, I think I walked away between like 150 and 200 grand and I was absolutely blown away and this and i'm, yeah. a, I'm I, I was still an apprentice mm. and i've got nearly 200 grand in my bank it was like that's sick it was, that's it so was, cool it was mind-blowing yeah and i um i remember when i when all those all that money was in my account and i was i just got qualified as an electrician i was kind of like just doing the, the nine to five still mm. and i just got to a point where i was like i don't need to do this because mm. i've got this money in my bank if if i if i quit I can just do this full time. Yeah. And um, I ended up, ended up quitting and then I was, there was just no good properties out in the market because COVID was, the, the market was going was, crazy. And you didn't know. No I, one I, knew. And no one knew what was going to happen. So I was just yeah. too hesitant. And that's how I, um, I kind of got into the automotive industry. I ended up started buying, um, I started buying cars mm. and I had a friend that used to work for Mercedes and I'd drop my car over after he'd finished work and he'd fix them up and we'd do them up together mm. kind of thing. And then I'd sell them. So I was buying and selling cars instead of houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just kind of the cosmetic stuff. It's exactly the same sort of shit with houses. I'd buy the shittest house. Yeah. Um, make it look nice and sell it. Yeah. Um, and so I did the same thing with cars. Buy like a, a nice car with good foundations that was just run down. Make yeah. It, make it look nice and sell yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So I did a couple of them and I got to a point, I think it was on my third car. And I said to him, like, bro, you've always got five or six cars out the front of your house, like you're working on. Why don't you have your own shop? Mm. And like, I knew he used to work for Mercedes and I know they, they wasn't on crazy money there as well. Mm. And, I, and he goes, oh, I just, I just can't afford it. And then it was just like one of those light bulb moments. And I knew I had that money sitting there. And I was like, well, I'll pay for the startup and you can run the shop and we can just go 50-50. And that's kind of how I got into the automotive industry. Mm. That's it. And then, yeah, we, we started, started that and kind of grew and now I guess that was just a mechanic shop at first and then the thing was with me is like I wasn't a mechanic so there was only mm. so much I could do so I was like all right what can I do to the business that's going to help it grow so yeah. I went I went and um, got my dealer's license so I could buy cars through auctions and um, yeah. the government and stuff like that so I got my dealer's license and started um, <laughs> funny story actually the, the week that I got my license I had all this money there still I I've obviously set up the shop, but I still had some money, <laughs> my, my money there, and I got my dealer's license, and um, so I'm like on the auctions, like all excited, like <laughs> bye, bye, I, bye, I, bye. I, ended up the first, the first, <laughs> the first three weeks, I bought sixteen cars. I remember that. I, that was sort of just when we started. I don't know. <laughs> I think oh, we we were friends before that, but I remember going to the shop. Yeah. And it was sort of like it was a sick shop, but it was behind <laughs> this other big factory, limited parking. And I was like, what is going on? There's like a car up here, car down there, car up here, coming there. This car's ripped apart. Half this car's over there. There's three cars in the driveway. Oh, fucking... There's all the parks are full. I was like, what the and fuck? That was on? like a massive fuck. <laughs> Yeah. wake up call to me because i'm fucking i'm like thinking in my head all right sick i can i can buy all these cars cheap yeah but they still take time to sell and i'm like yeah, I've, yeah. Still, I've still got to run the shop too in case something fucks up yeah, so yeah. you always need to have a buffer so i've literally gone all right i've <laughs> got the a, buffer so literally i've got <laughs> yeah. like all right i've got 120 grand in the bank i'm gonna buy as many cars as i can and yeah. start selling them to make money so i fucking spent all my money and then i've got fuck I can't, I can't sell all these cars like that yeah, so yeah of course it took me like six months to get rid of all these cars but yeah. like that was a massive lesson to me good it's, lessons too though yeah definitely 100%, 100%. that's so funny oh fuck and then we ended up so yeah i got my dealer's license um 
and I started buying and selling cars. Mm. Um, and then we kind of were like, all right, what can, what, how can we stand out from the rest of the, like the standard mechanic shops? We were like, all right, we're buying and selling cars too. Mm. And then we're like, well, what, what's something that a lot of cars generally need? And it's paint and panel work. There's all, yeah. everyone's got like a scratch here or a ding there. Yeah. So then we kind of looked into that and, um, now we've got like a, a paint booth yeah. and like a, a, one stop a, a, shop. Pa- a paint and panel shop. So we yeah. kind of make it your one stop autom- automotive shop. So mm. you can come there, get your mechanic work. You can buy and sell your cars there. Mm. And then if you need any um, mechanics or paint and panel, you can get it done there too. So yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment. And that's sick. also back into property yeah. like pretty heavily. And so know. obviously, um, I guess for those, I know a little bit, but I guess for those listening and for myself as well, what's, so that that's sort of, we've sort of, you know, we actually just told our story the whole time, which is pretty cool for, I guess, yeah. for the listeners to know. What, what what do you have sort of planned for the future? And I guess, what are you sort of focusing on moving forward? I know for myself, I'm going to continue to sort of build like the financial, just the foundations and just build yeah. them up slowly. So like financial health, you know, relationships, all that sort of stuff. Well, this year for me, last year was a massive year for growing these, these companies. Mm. So last year, uh, or 2021, uh, was the year that I started the mechanic shop, but 2022 was was really where it, where it mm. grew. Um, I think once I once I got my initial investment back and I was and we were making money, um, I was like, all right, I want to go back to property because that's what I know. Mm. That's my bread and butter, and I know that industry inside mm. and out. So yeah. um, I always wanted to go back to it, and I guess I kind of had the same ability to feel comfortable to go back into that yeah, industry. Yeah, for sure. So, Especially now that COVID had sort of like bought over. Yeah, COVID had kind of um, sort of, we knew where, where yeah, the property that, market was Yeah, that it wasn't was going. going to end the world. It was exactly, going to maintain it. Exactly maybe right. Bit. Yeah. So uh, last year I, I got back into property. That was, uh, mm. that was really big for me. I We, the same sort of thing. I've always just stretched myself to the limits, whether it be when I bought those 16 cars mm. and then also when I got back into property i went to an auction and i ended up i hadn't i didn't have the money to buy this house yeah. right but this no one was i i bid at a price that i thought that was very very fair i'd mm. say let's say that so i ended up i was at this auction this house had so much potential um is this the highland park house highland park yeah, house yeah, yeah. the first one that was the, sick the first one that i got i got back into yeah. this is my first sort of bigger bigger project yeah um I'm at this auction and I didn't ha- like all my money was still in those cars. Mm. So I hadn't, I didn't really have the foundations to be able to buy this house. Mm. Um, but it was too good to be, to like, to turn it down. So yeah, it's I, just an I, opportunity. Opportunity. Um, and that's one thing that's kind of, I feel like it set me apart is I've taken some serious risks, but mm. they've, they've been, they've paid off because I've, I've yeah. done all the right things. And also educated to risk too. You're not yeah, just they're, going they're like, educated. oh, let's go smell the roses over here. Let's just see what this is like. It's like, yeah. okay, I've done this before this is you know yeah definitely so i was at this auction and um we've gone through the house i'm like all right this house is worth like 1.1 mil mm. and um yeah it's the auction the opening bid so i think someone i think oh i opened it i think at 900k mm. and um no one bid and i'm just like fuck did, did i fuck up here and then i'm yeah. like i'm like because i had um rp data which is like a yeah, yeah, yeah. An, an app or like a, a website where you can check the value of houses and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Square meter and all that sort of Yeah. Stuff. So like I'm a, I'm on there and I'm like, oh no, it definitely says it's the value at 1.1. 1. 1. So yeah. I'm like, fuck. I know there's a lot of work that needs to be done to the house, but 900K is a, a fucking bargain. Yeah, good 200 grand to do. Of- so I've, um, no one bid. And then the auction auctioneer is like, oh, we're selling today, but it's not going to sell for that price and he's like he came back he's like it needs to be at like at over 950 so he put a bid in at 950 the auction he did yeah to try and get he said and i said i'll match you at 950 and then no one else bid and it was like oh well it didn't sell yeah so i kind of um i left it there i had a bit of a chat to the owners and the real estate agent um they're trying to obviously talk me up and I, i i'm very smart when it comes to buying and selling yeah 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 that's i think that's another thing that yeah has supply helped me along the way. no one else fucking put in so offers, so, so i kind of stood my ground and then i ended up later on that day i said hey can i come back tomorrow and have another look around yeah so i went back there it was on a sunday brought my partner with me and we had a walk around and she was like blown away by the house too massive mm. five bedroom five bathroom pool three stories mm. it was a beautiful home anyway well a lot of potential yeah collapsed balcony there was a lot of there was a, a lot bit of, of work done there was I a lot of work it, yeah, that yeah. needed to be done 
And um, I said, hey, I'll, I'm going to give you my final offer now. This is after I've walked through. Um, I said, you can either take it or leave it. Mm. I said, I'm going to go put another offer on a different house if you don't accept it. So yeah, I'm kind yeah. of putting that pressure on them. Like, hey, yeah, you hey. accept this, you're going you're gonna to lose yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's, it's a tough one to sell. I remember, it. yeah, collapse balcony. There was a, there was a bit of work. There's a lot of work. A little bit done. of older, but sick foundations. Yeah. And um, so I said, hey, 965 and I'll buy this house. Mm. And um, to be honest, I still wasn't expecting them to accept that mm. offer. Um, and I got a call back. I literally walked out, got to my car, took off, and they called me back when I was like 10 meters up the road. Mm. And they're like, can you come back inside and we can negotiate? And I went back inside and I just said, hey. There's no negotiation. There's no negotiation. Yeah, this is This it. is where I'm at. Say yes or no. Literally exactly yeah. what I said. And then they ended up accepting it. So I ended up buy, buying this place. And I just, the one thing I said, because I knew I didn't have the money for this house. Yeah, I knew yeah. I had to sell these cars. I was like, all right. I need a 45 day settlement because I need to be able to sell these cars yeah, yeah, yeah. to pay for the deposit. So I work in, I, they accepted it. 45 days was fine. And I had to get on my hustle to sell yeah, all this shit. Because yeah, yeah. I, 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 I knew that I had to come up with, at the time, I didn't have the credibility with the banks to be yeah, able yeah. So it's I, hard to. Secure finance so I, need, like I needed to have a 30% deposit to, yeah. make, to make this work. So I needed to sell everything that I had yeah. to get that over the line. And, yeah. um, it got so I remember it was the last week and I had this car that was worth uh, I think it was worth about sixty thousand and I needed fifty thousand to get this over yeah. the line. And I managed to to, to to get it sold in that last week and it was yeah. the, the biggest thing and I transferred all the money. I've got fuck all left for me. Yeah, nothing. But I, I had this house. And yeah, I yeah, this, yeah, now you go again. I had potential and yeah. um Yeah, that's that's kind of um how that started and it yeah. ended up it took me 12 and i was in saying that as well i was lucky enough i had a friend who was a, a chippy yeah, yeah um and he, he had him and his crew came out to help me mm. to get this done as quickly as possible and they knew that i had no money so he yeah, was yeah. kind of happy to take like payments here and there yeah and also like if i i still owed him money until it was sold and i, I told yeah, him yeah. the plan and he was happy enough to get paid once it was sold which i was super yeah. super lucky for shout out matt shout out to matt yeah thank That's you um and then, so yeah, it took me about 12 weeks. And, I, and I'm sorry, I moved into this house too mm. and with my family because I couldn't afford to pay rent and mortgage. So we yeah. moved in there while we're doing this renovation. And I just had a, a newborn, which was pretty full on. Mm. Imagine hard out renovations. Yeah. And a, yeah. So. And then with that, there's complications too. Complications with that too. My, my son was born with a heart condition and um, that was just, that's a whole nother ups and downs there. Yeah. Um, he ended up having happened to have um, open heart surgery, and he's fine now. But it was it was a very traumatic time. Yeah, that was in the period where I'm trying to trying to uh, renovate this house. Yeah, and COVID's going on. You're not allowed in the hospital. Oh, that was a nightmare. Sneaky. Oh fuck. Um, it's a whole another story. Yeah, that's a whole another story. And then, um, so what was I up to? Oh, so we did, so pretty much my, my mate that was helping me renovate this house. He was mm. happy to wait until it was sold. It took us 12 weeks to renovate and then um, we got it on the market and I was lucky enough to, to s the house sold within 20 hours of being on the market. Um, yeah. And it also, as I said, I bought it for 965 and I sold it for 1.6 mil. Fuck. In, uh, and that was, that was in 12 weeks. So, so like that, that was what kickstarted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kickstarted Must have me. been the photos. That was one of my <laughs> first ever real estate shoots. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I think it was, I think it was, it was, was it my first? It? it was your first, because you said you wanted to get into it, and that was yeah. mine. I was like, well, come try mine. And we were saying about the 360 camera and shit like that. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Crazy. Yeah, that's funny. Damn. So I started that. Yeah, <laughs> shout <laughs> well, out to me. Shout out, my boy. <laughs> that's sick. Well, I guess, um, yeah, so we, we sort of spoken on, I guess, so yeah, that that's so sort of your focus moving that, forward. And now yeah, you're going my, my into focus, property more. So that was like yeah. that was like a really eye opener for me. So mm. that was the start of uh, 2022, and I managed to do three like renovations like that through yeah, the year. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they they were all very successful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that was and that was like on the back, and I've still got my mechanic shop running. My business partner holds that down for me, so I don't need to be there. That was our kind of deal from the start. It's yeah, like yeah. I'll, I'll get it up and going, and then this, this, is, this yeah. is your your thing to, yeah. to run. I'm I'm still there um, at the moment. Between, let's say, if I got a 
say I've, I've finished a project and it's, I'm waiting for it to settle or whatever, then I'll go to the workshop yeah, yeah, and I'll just yeah. do as much as I can there. And I sort yeah, of try to pop, sure. pop in there, here and there. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, um, I guess, where it, uh, my, 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 where do we actually, what was your initial question? <laughs> the moving forward, what's your plan moving forward? So yeah, right. Keep, so, yeah, um, property. So yeah, property was, was the big one last year. Um, business in general. I mm. was just growing growing my wealth and my capital. Mm. Then this year, I kind of let myself go a little bit. I put on mm. some weight. Um, I, I put my I health... I, I went I went on a holiday. <laughs> I, I enjoyed myself because I want to reward myself yeah, for all yeah, this 100%. hard work. I, I set, really set the foundation for these really awesome, profitable companies. And um, this year, was a big focus for me was, was my health. Yeah. So that's one thing when I've, I've been getting into hard out whether it yeah, be yeah. boxing sprinting gym mm. yeah, and um, i've been uh, going hard out of that and um off the back of that sort of stuff though your businesses thrive too yeah 100 percent. if, you, you, if you're feel, fit you you know you, you, your body's fit your mind's fit you're in the best sort of definitely position definitely. to you know deal with stress and anxiety and all that sort of definitely. stuff to make bigger decisions and the right decision at the right time i think early on in my businesses starting out is as i said i've always taken big risks and i've kept my call and i've always made shit work i don't have mm. been lucky lucky enough that stuff paid off mm. but i think that's that's one big thing is keeping cool in tough situations is massive because yeah 100 if you if you get worked up and you stretch yourself out too much you end up making decisions that yeah and a quick correct. rash decision that could just blow everything 100 percent for sure um but yeah th- this year a big focus on, for me was is my health. Yep. Last year was my wealth. I think my companies are, are quite comfortable, um, mm. and my family is a big one for me. It's, yeah, of course. Um, new addition. Yeah, we got a new addition now. A little girl as well. So I got a boy and a girl. Chubster. Yeah, she's chubby. So she cute. Chubby. So cute. So yeah, this this year's health and family big ones yeah. for me. And um, I'm I've, I've bought a. Uh, so as I said, I did three sort of big renovations last year, mm. and then this year, I got, obviously I've, I've made money off each of those ones. So I've kind of built up enough money to be able to do something a bit on a bigger scale. So mm. I bought a um, development site in Southport with a DA approval for six uh, units. So yeah, that's, it. that's kind of um, big in, project. Yeah, it's a bigger project for me. I haven't done something like this before, so it's mm. exciting. Um, I've learned so much already. And it hasn't even started yet. Yeah, um, see. This is it. And there's another thing. Is like I've taken a risk here and this might not pay off. So yeah. we did like the, they call it a feasibility report. So they add up all the costs of, of the build and yeah. this and that and what you'd be able to sell the houses for. Originally when I bought it in, I think it was January, um, I was told the building cost should be around 22 to 2400 per square meter. That's how they work it out when you do a development. Yeah. Um, and over the time period until now we're at the middle of the year the, the cost of, of building is around that 2800 and that won't make the project work. yeah 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 so you gotta so, figure it out so i'm kind of in that the stage at the moment figuring yeah cool it, figuring it out so the, like as i said there's, there's you can take risks some of them pay off some of them don't so yeah. i might we'll see how how it all unfolds i might hold it and rent it out for a bit because there's still a house on the, on the yeah on yeah the, yeah on the property yeah i've seen it. it's cool and I, I i obviously i bought it higher than the market value yeah, because the i approval. had the da yeah, approval yeah, yeah. so i'm going to be losing money each week renting it mm. out but it's one of those things that hey if, if i hold it in a year or two when the, when the prices come down if they do come down i'll hopefully be able to do this development yeah 100 and then you can make stacks yeah or or if they don't it's one of those things i might have to cut my losses yeah um, yeah 100 percent take a loss and, and move it on to, to somebody else that can afford to do it cheaper yeah yeah for sure for sure so it's just one of those things of you, you need to take risks to be able to grow um, in business. So you have to sacrifice. And I think uh, one of those things where they don't always pay off, as simple as that. Mm. Um, I, it was a calculated risk and it, it may not pay off, but it might. So it's, yeah, it's just one of those waiting Figuring games at the moment. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. Yeah, sick. Um, health and family is, is my goal with uh, property and the mechanic shop in the background too. Yeah, sick. How good? How yeah, good? Well, I think that's us. I've got a question for you. Yeah. What is your purpose? To be the best version of myself I possibly can. 
Fucking know. I guess, yeah. Let's go. That's what I'm focusing on at the moment anyway. Even yeah. in future, my goal is, I guess, the pillars of, I guess, like I've said a few times, like health, wealth, and relationships, like health yeah. being sort of physical, mental. So train, like, as hard as I possibly can, but also make sure, like, not going, you know, all in because I obviously, you know, I don't want to live the athlete life anymore, but when I train, train hard, train with purpose, direction, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's massive. Actively focus on my mental health, actively focus on my phys- physical health, actively focus on my wealth and sort of laying the foundations and making sure I'm making risks, you know, calculated risks and all that sort of stuff. And then, um, yeah, relationships as well, like with, you know, friends and family and, you know, spouse, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, making sure that's healthy and I'm really focusing on that as well. And yeah. What about awesome. you? What's your purpose? For me, it's definitely definitely my family. I think once yeah. once you have um, once you have little ones, it's it's a whole different sort of grind. And that was a, actually I might just go back a little bit before this yeah. ends up. So yeah. wrap it up. <laughs> so before I had started any of these companies, mm. um, when I was buying and selling cars, but I hadn't started the shop, I f- I had found out that my partner was pregnant. Mm. And I didn't, I wasn't, I had just quit my job as an electrician mm. and I hadn't had, I wasn't working. I just had this money there. Mm. And that was like, whoa, okay, I potentially, quick, set I'm, some shit up. yeah, I'm like, wow, this, like I potentially have to bring a kid into this world in the next eight or nine months. Yeah. And I don't have anything going for me yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. I have all these goals and aspirations, but I haven't put anything into work right now they just they just just talk at the moment yeah 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 so that was like a massive driving point for me was actually starting to lay these foundations and get some sort of income and Set direction up, up. Yeah, yeah, for my I'm family sure. um that was that was massive for me so yeah my, my purpose definitely um definitely my family yeah shout out Bree, Makai. Shout out Bree, Makai, Malia. Malia, let's Max go. Life. Thank oh, you. Oh, well, hope you enjoyed that. That's a bit of our backstory, guys. Uh, sort of wasn't intending to be like that, but nah. that was cool. Hope you got to know us well. And um, yeah, see you on the next step. We didn't even explain what about the podcast, did we? <laughs> really yeah, that's just sort of went on a tangent. We've been talking for nearly an hour. All right. Fuck yeah. Thank you. Well done, brother. Cheers.